This is a HeadGum Podcast. Monday, September 12th. Welcome to an all-new If I Were You, brought to you by, drumroll, squeeze. Do, 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 Slow. Do, do. Slow. Do, 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 do. All right. Shut up for a second. Sorry. Squarespace. Squarespace.com. A website that allows you to build other websites. It's genius. Whoa. Although it's kind of crazy on their part because what if someone creates another Squarespace? Another Squarespace. So they use creates. Squarespace to create another Squarespace, thus rendering it obsolete. Unless Squarespace is like the god and it's just creating clones or army men, soldiers really. Orcs. Yeah, orcs in a future battle. But if you need to create a website, a blog, a portfolio, even an online store, Squarespace makes it easy. It sure does. Uh, not only that, but they have beautiful templates, seamless customer support, commerce tools, everything you need to create a beautiful, professional-looking website uh, is all there. Yeah. And it's super affordable. We love Squarespace. We use Squarespace. That's how you know we like it. And uh, you actually also get a free custom domain if you sign up for a year. That's the truth. So it's a free .com, which is a cost, but... It's included in a year worth of Squarespace. It's also pretty complicated to set up right. uh, your own website, but Squarespace sort of takes that, uh, takes care of that for you. Uh, the problem is there's not a lot of good dot coms left. I know you probably think there aren't any good dot coms left. Mm-hmm. That's not quite true, actually. Every time we endorse Squarespace, or I should say, Squarespace uh, sponsors us, we uh, provide you guys with. Two available free dot com URLs. That is correct. Uh, Mine this week? Yeah. Fingerginger dot com. Huh? Finger ginger. Finger <laughs> ginger. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it looks cooler. It's than pretty it's fun to look finger at. ginger. Finger ginger. Or finger ginger. Finger, uh, or wait, fing, finger <laughs> ginger ginger. All right. Whatever. Let me see mine. <laughs> Fine. Instagram cracker. That's actually really good. It's a portmanteau of Instagram and Cracker. Is it Graham, like Graham Crackers, or is it Graham? I'm actually glad you asked. They're both available. Wow. That's right. Snag them both. Uh, Squarespace makes it, once again, easy for you to create a website for yourself or for a loved one. So if you're ever in the market for a website, go to squarespace.com, enter offer code if I were you, and get 10% off your first purchase. That's squarespace.com, enter offer code if I were you to get 10% off their already low, low prices. Squarespace, set your website apart. I think the new slogan is Squarespace, register finger ginger. <laughs> no, I don't think that's true. Okay. <laughs> it's a very specific tagline for the finger entire ginger? website. Yeah, finger ginger. Finger ginger. Uh, this was a fun episode. Pat Castle's back. Back at it again. Ooh, do you hate yourself for saying that? A little. (laughs) Damn, Daniel! (laughs) You've ruined me. Ah! (laughs) Uh, Things got real, obviously. Let's get right into it. Peace. That was a that was a cover. Do you know what it was a cover of? The Pixies. That's incorrect. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> no, it is it the is. Pixies. Uh, the Pixies. Where is my mind? Uh, Where is my mind? Where is my cheese? <laughs> I love that song. Mitchell Kroom has nothing music related to promote, but shout out to his brother Paul. Woo! Who did everything? <laughs> <laughs> Who actually wrote and recorded the song? I came up with "Where Is My Cheese," <laughs> <laughs> and then my older bro sort of figured it out from there. Uh, Pat Castle's in the house. Hi. When was the last time you were on this here program? Um, 
I think I can search. I think it was the one, the Hyao was the name of the episode. God. Hey, was, you mean? Hey, what did I say? You <laughs> <laughs> <He> said Hyao. <laughs> I, I said, yeah, what? Come you on. idiot. I did a Dean scream. <laughs> yeah. Have you been on the show twice? Or, uh, or once? That, no, twice, right? Was it twice? I think maybe, yeah, twice. Seems, I think I did it once in the back of your guys' house. Yeah, back in the day. With that, you, had, you had a cool backyard and like the extra, ha- the extra house oh, in the back. Yeah. And maybe another time in your other house. You did one of our first yeah. ones in Amir's apartment. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was episode 30. What was Towel it about? Cave. In the towel fort. Yeah. Do you remember what we talked? I, I, if, if, if you mention a story from it. I can't. Okay. I try to listen to every episode before I go to bed, but like, there's over 200 now, so I never get to it. You only to it get all. through one and a half. Yeah, ever. You, you should do like conne- you should do mini sodes. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know, like shorter versions. It's like a <laughs> recap or something. Oh, that's good. That sounds cool. Thursday mini sode. Yeah, just like a, a, a we only talk one about bite question. size, and you get uh, Vern Troyer to do it. <laughs> oh, Pat. His name was Minnie Me in the movie. That's how they did it, not me. <laughs> I called him Burn. <laughs> you guys remember? Like, I feel like people forget that Beyonce was in the third um, Austin Powers movie. That is oh, pretty crazy. Right. Is see, you're a movie guy. Are there ever like cameos where the person goes on to be bigger than the movie they're in? I would say that one is. She was bigger than that movie when she when she. No, because otherwise it. she wouldn't have done it. Like she wouldn't do it now, even if For she would. Sure. Even, I don't think she would do it. I don't think she'd be in the fourth Austin Powers if she, they let her be the lead in it. Even like she wouldn't be Austin Powers in the fifth Austin Powers. The fourth Austin Powers. Oh, there's oh, there's only been three. Yeah, she was in Gold Member. Yeah, at the, at the time that movie was huge. <laughs> was it? Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying Beyonce would be in it now? Oh no, not now. No, but I, I mean that she... wouldn't. I don't think the parallel is the same. Like it's uh, like uh, now Austin Powers is sort of a joke. It's like because would Mike Beyonce would joke. Beyonce be in like the biggest comedy this year? She doesn't even do cam. She doesn't, yeah, she, I don't think she's even done like like she didn't do a cameo in Pop Star. She doesn't even do like those kind of like. She's like, bigger than that. She's almost bigger than movies. Yeah, but, but she used to be like an actress writer or sorry, actress singer. Now she's only doing singing. She doesn't Did do she acting. Was, was she an actress aside from uh, Austin Powers? Once was you she? do Austin Powers, like where where do you go? What how do you top that? Was, I, wasn't acting? like Gwyneth Paltrow in Austin Powers? <laughs> Yeah, wasn't Gwyneth Paltrow? Oh, no, it was Austin? Heather. It was Heather Graham, or, or was it? Gwyneth Paltrow might have been in the in the beginning of. The, I don't know why I know all this. In the beginning of the third one, there's that whole like sequence where it's like Austin Power, the movie within the movie, and Tom Cruise plays Austin Powers, oh, and Kevin Spacey plays Doctor Evil. Oh, God, so I, Tom Cruise was in it. I haven't seen these uh, movies in a while. Actually, that's a cool like Kevin Bacon game uh, thing, where it, like. What movie was Tom Cruise and were Tom Cruise and Beyonce in? Oh, that's a good one. I'm at, no, I'm, I'm really asking you right now. <laughs> you already forgot. <laughs> We've been talking about it for two and a half minutes. Some would say too long. Sorry, uh, I think it was perfect. Thanks for coming on the show again. I just saw it. you're on episode thirty, and then episode one twenty seven, mm. and now it's like in the two thirty. So like every hundred or so, we have you back. Cool. Love it. Um, like it. Pat, staying with me. Is that fair to say? Is that weird? Is You've been crashing me? with me. I've been crashing on your couch. Yeah, this is. I'm. This is a laundry day. I'm literally. I'm using a washing machine as we speak. Oh shit! Are you? Okay. Yeah. Because did you make sure to plug in the tube in the back? Otherwise, it'll just. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I have to go. <laughs> There's god, the... your laundry machine's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you don't plug it into the sink. The water, the suds just sort of spill out of the back. I did, but I also just realized I left the door open. I left the front door of the washing machine open. Oh, and like, no. No one's going to go into the apartment because it's covered in suds. Yeah, I, I'm just looking outside. No one's going to steal any of your ruined shit. We're half a mile away, but I do see this like sort of <laughs> tidal wave of, of bubbling water sort of trickling down the street. I'm so sorry. That I can't. sounds like it's a problem beyond just not plugging in the tube. Yeah. <laughs> A tidal wave might not be your apartment. <laughs> There's no way, right? Yeah, There's no way. Tsunami. One a... tube could cause that. A tidal wave half of, half of a mile away. Uh, but now you live in New York. The first two times you were an, a native Angelino. Mm-hmm. Now you're back in New York. Yes. And now you're visiting L.A. Correct. Uh, I'm like just... You're bi-coastal. Are I'm... you bi-coastal? I'm... Uh... Are you at least bi-curious about the coast? Are you bi-winning? I... <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think bi-coastal means you like have a house on both coasts, right? Or you you spent you like you split your time pretty evenly between them. I don't do and that. You, he's homeless in New York. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah I don't you're live... non-coastal. <laughs> yeah, you I'm... spend 
I would say nine months out of the year in Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> Under an overpass. <laughs> Uh, no, you write for the Samantha B show. Mm-hmm. Full frontal with Samantha B. That's pretty cool. It is cool. So you're a TV writer now. You look fucking big shot, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah you, well, you're staying on my couch. You piece yeah, of Hollywood. Shit. Yeah, you, you <laughs> took the cushions away, like to try and put me in my place. <laughs> kind of power move. I tried to smoke you out of the hole. Uh, no, that's exciting though. Yeah, it's great. It's uh, it's uh, I'm uh, we're on hiatus at the moment, but uh, we're How coming back. How long's your hiatus? We come back on September twelfth. Mon- Monday, ten ten thirty. What's and your schedule like during like throughout the year? Are you is it a daily show or a weekly it, show? It's a weekly show. Monday every Monday. Um, You're also nominated for an Emmy. Yes, you're an Emmy nominated. Uh, the writer, writer. We got a, for for writing. The show is nominated. So you're an Emmy nominee. I'm yes, I, as of this recording. Right, you are wearing a shirt that says I'm an Emmy nominee. That's <laughs> right. why I bring it up. Ask me about it. <laughs> <laughs> when this airs, though, I'll be an Emmy loser. <laughs> <laughs> so really like now is your the high point yeah this it's is, an honor just to be nominated this is the only time you guys would have me on yeah it's an <laughs> i'm beneath you the other it's it's not year. an honor to lose but it's an honor to be nominated yeah and have not be determined yet we call it a nod in oh. the industry i don't know if you guys wow yeah. you got it's the a, emmy nod not a nation <laughs> it's We've just gotten it's a the, typo. Emmy, the Emmy shake where they just do the no, uh, the, yeah, the no. No, no, yeah. That's that's a chiller way to do it. It's like the legit the, one of these. Uh, yeah, like the bouncer. I, no one could see what I just did. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're what? How would you say it? you're tilting your head back Wait, like a human chin towards pest the dispenser? Like, how did my chin upward? Yeah, the upward chin jet. <laughs> so. Uh, all right. Well, you're on the podcast again. I don't have to explain to you how things work, but in case somebody's listening for the first time, huge Pat Castles fan that forgot the first two episodes is, is checking our show for the first time right now. This is an advice show. It's called If I Were You, the only advice show on the internet hosted by me and Jake. Sometimes it's just us two trying to dispense wisdom. People will email us. They're, they're in a difficult place in their lives. They're seeking advice. Uh, sometimes we have friends. Sometimes we have Emmy-nominated friends. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, not not often, but sometimes we have Emmy nominated friends, and today we have our Emmy nominated friend Pat Castles in the house to help uh, help offer our advice to these people. Uh, as always, these are real emails from real people. You know that. Me? Yeah, you. Yeah, of course. Uh, but we need to give them fake names just to preserve their anonymity. Oh, okay. So, Pat, if you have a fake man's name. I'll read this question. Um, Dirk. Dirk. <laughs> Dirk? Dirk. And then what's Dirk's last name? He doesn't need one. Like Beyonce, he's bigger than the last name. That's it's just awesome. Dirk. Actually, her last name is Knowles. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't need to be. You don't need to say that. All right. Dirk writes, Dear Jake Namir, I'm a senior, I'm a high school senior, and there's this girl that I was talking to a few months ago, and I really like this girl, and it seemed like she was interested in me too. And one day, she asked me if I liked her, and I panicked, and I said, only as a friend. And we went on as normal, and less than a week later, she got a boyfriend, and I've been thinking about her a lot lately, and we've been talking like we used to, and she even asks me to do stuff like stay on the phone with her until she falls asleep, and other stuff that normal friends don't, don't. Uh, don't do even though she still has a boyfriend and i really want to tell her how i feel so should i seize the cheese or move on and find someone else please help Holy i think that shit. was all one sentence there was no punctuation at all <laughs> that was a hard one Just to read 19 different question marks <laughs> scattered throughout that's the this is the um uh the the loneliness and horniness of a teenager who can't even handle himself. Right. That, is, that, that, that is the proper this punctuation. girl, for and I liked her, and she fucked, and she's with someone else, but she asked me to hang out, and I need uh, help. And he sent it from an email address that says something like, Jake and Amir, please help me at gmail.com. So he created he this oh my God. because he was afraid he'd get caught, maybe by the boyfriend, maybe by the girlfriend. <laughs> It's hard because when you're a teenager, that's when you peak want girls. Yeah, but it's also every, when you peak don't understand. Every teenager's psyche is one <laughs> run-on sentence. <laughs> one needy run-on sentence. Holy shit, this is everything. This is now. This is happening. What do I do? Oh, I made a mistake. Oh, my God. Uh, do you remember the whole stay on the phone with me until I fall asleep thing? That, that he just said in the email or yeah. when you were a kid? Has that, no, just ever. Have you ever had that? I have not... Uh... Had not not specifically until I fall. I've been I've had long phone conversations with right. girls in the evening. Yeah, but 
I don't. Uh, they don't fall asleep, but I'm talking to them. <laughs> oh, very <laughs> pretty nice. Pretty darn interesting. Because <laughs> I'm very loud and anxious. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I fall asleep, it's it's very very it's, nasally. It's I night snore. tremors. A lot. But I've heard tremors. of that. It seems like it seems cute. Yeah, I remember like having this cell phone that was so old, and like after like an hour and a half of conversation, like it was hot to the touch. I couldn't even like keep it to my ear anymore, and like, but I always felt so bad being like. All right, now let's just let's go to sleep. This <laughs> you is got third cute. degree burns yeah. on your ear. This is very nice and cute. Ha ha! I don't want to leave you either. This I do want to hang up though. You were, you were talking to girls? No, this was college. Uh, this was last night. <laughs> still though, <laughs> college talking to girls. That's still well, a win. <laughs> That's a W. That's it. Well, you're really eating up minutes there. That uh, seems uh, it, with, with the cell phone. This kid is. That was another thing. I remember cell phone plans. You had to, have to n- monitor your minutes, but they, I had free nights and weekends. So like after nine oh one p.m., that's when we can chat forever. Nice. Uh, she wasn't worth an afternoon call. Until the sun comes up. <laughs> uh, so. I didn't know kids still talk to each other on the phone. That's unrelated. <laughs> Afternoon call. <laughs> Afternoon delight. <laughs> By speaking to you on the phone. That's when you chat for 15 minutes around 3 p.m. I yeah. call her at 9 a.m. And it's like, because you're worth it, baby. High noon. <laughs> She's like, I was a, I please, I need another hour of sleep. <laughs> Very cool. I talk to her until she wakes up, actually. That's my thing. Not until she falls asleep. Yeah, and then when she wakes up, you go to bed. Yeah. Like you guys are taking shifts guarding something. Uh, so this situation is this girl has a boyfriend, but she's still kind of acting like she's into him. I think she she should tell her. I mean, she asked, "Do you like me?" She yeah. straight up asked him, and he said he he said no, but he meant to say, "I think you should say yeah." yeah. I, girls, I think most of the time know when a guy likes them, and if they don't like that guy, they wouldn't. She wouldn't ask. Like mm. if she didn't want to be liked by him. And she, she would know. She knows that she that he likes her. Right. So asking is sort of like a flirtatious thing. Like, do you like me? And he's like, as a friend. Yeah. But it can, if she didn't like him at all, do you really think that she would say, do you like me? She would just know and <laughs> totally ignore you. Yeah. And the fact that she's still talking to you on the phone until she falls asleep is the most flirtatious sign of all. Yeah. Because she, she wants to hear you. your voice. Right. So what is what's the play now? Is it like... Hey, I've been thinking about your question, and uh, I'd like to change my answer. Yeah, I mean, by the way, also like a mulligan. He th- he <laughs> he stumbled into like a really uh, kind of baller move. He was like, "I don't like you," and that probably made her like him more. Mm. She now got a new boyfriend, trying to make him jealous, and it worked. <laughs> and now she's <laughs> fucking the other guy. <laughs> Ooh, I'm so jealous, and now That's she's engaged. Which what, what he didn't mention is that when he's talking to her until she falls asleep, she's also ha- being fucked by the other by the boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Will you stay on the phone with me while this guy goes down on me? Uh, so I think I think you can you could uh, say, "Hey, I." I lied to you before. I I do like you as more than a friend. Mm, that's cute. I lied to you, and then she's like, "I can't believe you would lie to me." This relationship obviously means nothing. But it's not to a you, lie if it's... you believe it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so you can tell her the truth. It's not too late. The the it signs. Might be too are... late. I mean, it might be too late, but you should definitely tell her. Might as well. Yeah, you have nothing to lose. You only have. You've already lost. You're already doing all the. Uh, uh, responsible parts of the relationship, which was like talking to them until you fall asleep. You might as well get some of the joy of making out and stuff. Mm-hmm. I guess the only reason, yeah, because you know, also like the only reason not to would be like you don't want to make the friendship awkward. But like, since she already asked you if you like him, like it's not to me that is it's not awkward because she put the question on the table. So like, even if you say I like, you know what, I thought about it and I do like you, and not just as a friend, then <laughs> she's then it's a. Uh, you know, it's like, sorry, too late. I have, I have a boyfriend now. And it's like, at least we tried. And it's like, so didn't get the timing right, but whatever. What's with the phone calls then? How do you explain the phone calls till four in the morning? Um, I just like talking on the phone, dude. <laughs> Very good then. Okay, talk to your boyfriend on the phone. Arrivederci. Well, he sleeps over all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk to him on the phone. It wouldn't make sense. There'd be a feedback loop because we'd be so close to each other. Uh, Shit. All right, go for it. Uh, we have connect four. Another, that's right. Another question from another man. Do you have another guy's name for us? Uh, Kirk. Mm. <laughs> I love it. I don't understand what the theme is so far, but maybe <laughs> once, if we get to three, I'll start figuring it out. <laughs> hey guys, my wife's pregnant with a baby girl, and we wanted ideas for baby names. We were both looking for something scientific, so something from astronomy. 
I also like Greek mythology, so anything that crosses over might be good. Or if you guys have any other ideas or themes, we'd be open to us as well. Uh, thanks. Yours truly, Kirk. Whoa, Ooh. we could name a baby? Yeah. Smirk. That's or lurk. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't blow your idea right now. Uh, I got, don't worry, I have more. Yeah. <laughs> Profusely sweating. <laughs> I gotta Google something real quick. Have you ever named a baby? No, but my... I can't I believe sh- you had to think about it. <laughs> Did you ever even come close? I've, I've never <laughs> named a baby that I know of. Nice. <laughs> so you haven't. No. <laughs> <laughs> ever. Uh, I think one of my nephews was all, was potentially going to be born on my birthday, and they were like, maybe we'll name him after you if, if he's born on your birthday. Wow. But, December 26th. But he wasn't. Nice. <laughs> they rushed a C-section. <laughs> <laughs> to avoid their promise. <laughs> now it's a Christmas baby, a full Christmas baby. So uh, names that you like, whether they have to be, I don't know, you you probably know more about astronomy or Greek mythology. Do you have an example of an uh, astronomy or a Greek mythology name? Hmm. I Just, actually know a lot about Greek mythology. And I resent that you <laughs> that you that you that you that, that you that you leapfrogged me to Pat. All right. So, do you have a Greek with <laughs> Hercules? <laughs> a girl's name? <laughs> Herculia. It's a girl. Zeusa. <laughs> Is it a girl? Uh, yeah, it's a girl. Oh man, the I moon. Th- <laughs> <laughs> the, the moon, moon. <laughs> with a the. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, the like moon, the Jupiter's like moon, game, or... space, <laughs> Star Jones. Persephone. Persephone's a pretty one. Mm-hmm. Persephone? Athena. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. I don't know with who these, what they were. These were the gods. I think Athena was queen of the gods. Who's but... the one that ate the pomegranate seeds <laughs> and had to spend half the year underground in Hades? And that's Isn't why that... we have seasons. I think that's Persephone. <laughs> Persephone. There you have it. You want to name her one. after a pomegranate, pomegranate eating idiot? <laughs> <laughs> Who's in hell right half a year? Uh, I noticed that I like names that are were popular in like the early 1900s that are like coming around again. This isn't really really Greek mythology, but I researched the top 200 names in England and Wales in 1900 through 1910. Why did and you do that? Because did I want... you run out of like porn to search for? No, no, this is for this question. Oh, okay. <laughs> When I'm done with porn, I get off to names from whales in what the is 1900s. What does that have to do with astronomy and... It doesn't. But like he said, he can also give us some... All right, go get ahead. Get some other suggestions. Right. So how nice would, would all these names be? Uh, Annie, love it. Edith, great. Kind of a throwback. Alice, ooh, that's nice. I, I recognize that name. Dorothy, ooh. Margaret, Lily, Violet, Ada, Beatrice, Ivy... Rose, Gertrude. A lot of uh, botanical ones there. Yeah. Ivy, Rose. Right. I like all those. Those are, those Lily. are, some, those are some good ones. Lily. I also, Lily. I think you could... Olive, come come hither. Jupiter has... Uh, how many moons? 36? I, mean, I don't know. Jupiter moons? I thought it had oh, two. Oh, 67. Jesus. Uh, so, name after some Jupiter moons. That, there's some good ones. We all know Europa, but we don't know the lesser known. Ganymede. Low. <laughs> Kalista, Amalthea, Phoebe. Oh, those are good. Adrastia. Phoebe's, Phoebe's fun. It's Phoebe. Oh. Or <laughs> yeah. Phoebe. God, I hate. You'd have to give your child a name that she'd all, constantly have to clarify. Ooh, Ilara. How do you spell it? E L A R A. Ilara is pretty cool. So is Lita. So. Hera is a really strong name. Hera? Hera. Oh, from Greek mythology. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, she Kirk. Was the- if you are listening, let us know uh, if you use any of these. That way, if anybody asks us if we've named a child before, we can say yes. Uh, just looking some more of these Jupiter moons, they get pretty, uh, they start sounding like chemicals. Like there's one called Praxidike. There's also one called S slash 2003J16. That's a beautiful name. They even ran out of names to give it to the moon. But then there's one called Silen, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I want to try and think of other themes like this guy said i think that's kind of fun oh like so like he can he can search this thing and then like have 50 to his disposable so he said greek mythology jake said jupiter names i said names from the the early 20th century in wales uh what about like uh what about famous monkeys (laughs) (laughs) dunstan famous monkeys grape ape coco Clyde, Mighty Joe Young. 
No, these aren't really. Very those good. are all men's names. Those are all men monkey names. Yeah, famous female monkeys. What about um, famous women? Just famous women from history, like Amelia. Oh, that's a good name. Amelia, though Amelia, she went, she was went missing in the middle of the Atlantic. So yeah, Amelia was one. kind of a coward, right? Because she she couldn't even figure out how the plane worked. <laughs> how does that make her a coward? Like at least <laughs> first, at least get the insult right if you're going to be so disrespectful. Wasn't Earhart kind of an airhead? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm serious, dude. You how thought, hard is it to fucking drive a car or whatever the fuck she did? When I rented the movie Airheads, I thought it was <laughs> Amelia Earhart. <laughs> what? When I rented the movie Airheads, I thought it was Amelia Earhart. <laughs> 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 I actually wasn't so wrong. If you watch it with a keen eye. <laughs> Sorry, real quick. A keen eye and a cool tongue. One of Saturn's moons is actually called Phoebe. So if you did like the name Phoebe when you thought that I said Phoebe, when uh-huh. I said Phoebe, right. that, uh, sorry, Phoebe, you can name Phoebe. her Phoebe. Dude. She's the funniest of the friends, I think. Oh, that's true. Next to Chandler. <laughs> Ooh, and there's, Joey. There's a moon named Pandora. And Rachel had her moments, too. <laughs> Actually, Pandora's she from uh, Greek mythology. Pandora's a great one. I love Pandora. That seems like, yeah, that seems like then you're going to Because then if you eat her out, it's like Pandora's box. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of cute. <laughs> Sorry to talk about your baby that way. <laughs> Bro, you got to tell me when she turns 18. <laughs> I'm sorry. Even if her name isn't Pandora, I'd love to hook up with uh, SJ200's box. I actually feel it. I, I realize I'm talking about an actual child that's going to exist. No, no, no. Unborn yet. Yeah, she's not. Oh, good. Fun. Yeah. No, she, so we can imagine how hot she's going to be. when life begins. So. Oh, also, God, nobody said, Did he say it was a daughter? Oh, you know what? Never mind. It was a son. All right, let's re-record. <laughs> Did he say it was a daughter or just yeah. a child? Uh, with a baby girl. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Are you guys, do you think you'll uh, do the I don't want to know, the gender thing, if you have a child? I think there's enough unknowns when you're having a child. I want to know everything about my kid. That's if awesome. If it's got a pussy or a dick, <laughs> you better tell me. <laughs> this is you talking to the gynecologist. <laughs> uh, I want to know, so you know what color to paint the nursery. Oh, that's beautiful, Pat. Well, yeah, uh, Yellow for boy and forest green for girl. I go by a, a German uh, co- co- color standards. Yeah, the original mother goose and grim. So they yeah. could tell they could tell you everything about your baby. Like, hey, it's going to be healthy, and you don't have to know if it's going to be a boy or a girl. Yeah, that's pretty fun. I would like that. That's a fun game. I don't even want to know if it's going to be healthy. Like, I want that. I want that surprise. Jesus. <laughs> You have an unhealthy baby boy. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it's unhealthy. We already painted the nursery. <laughs> now it has to stay in this incubator because it has jaundice. Jesus, I think I'd want. I, I would probably want to know. I'm. Uh, what's who? Like it, it's whether you're surprised when it comes out of the, the mommy, or whether you're, you're surprised when the doctor it's, or the, it comes daddy. Out of the daddy. Let's be a little more politically correct. <laughs> Twenty sixteen. The baby might come out of the daddy. daddy. The daddy's yeah. pee hole. <laughs> I've seen the movie Junior. <laughs> I know what's come out of his ass or his dick in that movie. It came no, out of his ca- mouth. Neither. What? I never saw the movie. They, I, I, I never He's saw pregnant. it either. He is pregnant, right? And I assume at the movie he goes into labor. I think they. And does it, do they ever say it's coming out of your ass, Arnold, or it's coming out of <laughs> your? <laughs> it's coming. Where does it come out? <laughs> I don't know. I would guess they C-section? had a cer- yeah, had a C section, but or or. He like does a snot rocket and the baby just fires out. I <laughs> like in a what Terminator a weird one movie when he pulls it out of his nose. That's the strangest know. movie. I want. You've, have you seen it? No. That movie takes place at a university, but they shot it at my college. So I remember. I remember seeing Junior and being like, "Oh, that's where it's shot at your college." Yeah, yeah, they shot it at Berkeley. Whoa, that's impressive. Thanks, man. <laughs> Didn't do anything. They shot Junior. Black Swan at my college. The movie Black, the dance scenes in the Black Swan. <laughs> the exteriors. Yeah. What can, about the scene where they freaking les out on each other, dude? <laughs> can you name the lady in Junior? That was shot in my uh, uh, geometry class during uh, the class. What? Can you name the lady in Junior? Emma Thompson. Wow. That means you know a lot about movies. Congrats, man. I just can see that video box and I see her like poking her head into the frame or something like that. That's the second box reference you've had in the last three minutes. Pervert. You've no, got this the second time I met uh her vagina, so <laughs> Are you looking up to see if he has has it out of his ass or not? You know, Wikipedia doesn't have spoilers. Um I will say that an interesting fact about the movie is that it costs sixty million dollars. That's a like lot. Yeah. Well, because Schwarzenegger probably cost a lot of money back then. That was peak Schwarzenegger, peak governator. And I think they actually impregnated him, which might have been like the extra, because he right. wanted to do like he wanted to be like completely natural. This is the rabbit hole, by the way. This is that this is that podcast we have to fucking do. It was nominated for an Oscar. I'll leave it on that. What? Yeah. Best. We, we, no, we not. We gotta find out. 
The most important thing. What? Did it, How did he have the baby? Out? I think it was just a C-section. J- did he have the baby? Actually? I can't believe you think he came out of his butt. I think he came out of his ass. <laughs> uh, why don't we take a break? I'll do a little bit of research, and then on the other side of this, we'll come back with the answer. So let's take a quick break, think one more sponsor, and then we'll come back with more. This episode is also brought to you by FrameBridge.com. I love FrameBridge. It's really smart and it's really simple. Basically, if you have empty walls or perhaps a gift to give to someone with empty walls, somebody that can use art in their house, what? (laughs) Uh, There's no greater gift than framing a photo. Adults love it. Children love it. People in between love it. Yeah, Uh, you know what? I actually... uh, I'm going to – there are websites that give you free uh, high-res photos. One of them is Mm -hmm. unsplash.com. Beautiful, beautiful photos. And you can basically send those to FrameBridge. And they'll they'll make uh, awesome prints for you if you've got empty walls. If you want, like, an adult-looking wall. That's a good tip. You can also even upload pictures directly from Instagram. The hardest part about framing photos was, like, dealing with going to the store, figuring out what frames to get, paying exorbitant fees. But FrameBridge – simplified all that and if you go to framebridge.com and use promo code if i were you you'll save an additional 15 percent off your first order their prices start at 39 dollars, so it's already very inexpensive Yeah, framing was a was a thing that needed to get disrupted and nobody even knew about it it's kind of a racket it's kind of a racket and framebridge said no more so if you go to framebridge.com use promo code if i were you you'll save an additional 15 percent off they're already low low prices and all shipping is free so that's another uh, added incentive. Holy shit. So send someone or yourself a framed photo of someone or yourself. That'd at, be nice. At framebridge.com. Thank you as well to Trunk Club for sponsoring this episode. Bum, ba, da, you, we were talking about making your house look better. How about making yourself look better? Yeah, on your body. Uh, there's no better way to look better than to wrap yourself in new, stylish, comfortable, uh, well-fitted clothes. Yeah, no matter how much you hate yourself on the inside like I do, mm-hmm. you you dress well on the outside and people think, hey, that guy's A-OK. They make it so easy to dress in the best clothes because it's handpicked by your own personal stylist. It's a real human. Yeah. It's not an algorithm. A stylish professional. You go there and you tell them what you like, what you don't like, and then a a real stylist chooses clothes for you, sends them to you in the mail. You keep what you like. You send back what you don't. It's basically like having your very own personal stylist. And it's not just from like one or two brands. There are 80, 80 top brands. They ship them right to your door. So much better than shopping because you just go into J. Crew, You go into the Gap. You're getting shit. You're yeah. getting crap. <laughs> uh, Trunk Club is not just another way to shop online. The stylist takes time to understand your unique look. And they have uh, warehouses in Dallas, New York, uh, Los Angeles, Chicago, and D.C. Sorry, I should say Trunk Club Clubhouse. Ooh. Uh, you can work with your stylist in person for free. Can I try again? Uh, you don't just walk into J. Crew. You don't just walk into the Gap. You're getting poo poo and you're getting crap. <laughs> That's very. That's good. what I wanted to say. Uh, <laughs> that was perfect. I nailed it the first fucking time. <laughs> if you go, oh yeah, <laughs> folks. If you go to trunkclub.com/slash. If I were you, type in your measurements, share your likes and dislikes, and get your very own personal stylist. This is another great gift for for a dude in your life, mm-hmm. or for yourself if you're ready to up your game. One more time, trunkclub.com/slash. If I were you. Thanks, Trunk Love, for sponsoring this episode. Now let's get back to Pat. Back to Pat. Back Back to to Pat. Pat. (laughs) Hey, we're back. I think the answer is that it came out of his ass. No! (laughs) I knew it! No! No, at one point it says, uh, Angela goes into labor. Hesse, who's Schwarzenegger, has an emergency C-section. So I think it was a, they sliced him open and took the baby out. Who's Angela? Oh, God, you don't want to get this deep into it. Yeah, okay. But I, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. I will I'm not. drop it. I yeah. think they're cowards. They didn't They didn't go full throttle towards him actually having to push the baby out of an orifice. You think? You yeah. think with modern science, like, you could almost put a baby inside of a guy. Yeah. Sea- male seahorses give birth. There kind you of. have it. Is it that crazy to say? Uh, I wanted to say real quickly that Jake and I are going to be doing live shows in Toronto, Minnesota, Chicago, and Detroit coming up in the next few weeks. So you can check uh, all those dates and ticket availability at ifireyoushow.com. Have you ever been to those cities? Which cities did you say again? Chicago, Detroit, Minneapolis, Toronto. I've been to 
Chicago, and I think that's it. I don't think I've been to Detroit. Maybe some air, maybe like a, a layover in an airport. That's awesome. There's a great Cinnabon in the Detroit <laughs> airport that I highly recommend. There's that restaurant in the Chicago airport that we always eat at. Oh, the tor- the torta Tortas. place. Yeah, there's like one restaurant that's like in the O'Hare airport that's like actually legit really good. Oh, wow. That if you ever find yourself in the O'Hare airport with a layover, uh, I think it's called Tortas or something. Or Frank, is it, is it Frank's- called Tortas? I realize I that's, that's what they sell. Yeah, you ever go to a seafood restaurant in LAX? I realize I've gone there every time I go to LAX. It's seafood? Called, like, there's a seafood restaurant called like... Oh, Gladstone's. Gladstone's, yeah. yeah. That's Rick, my jam. Rick Bayless's Tortas Frontera is what it's called. At the Free plug, dude. Yeah, dude. Oh, no, they're paying us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're not really going to Chicago. <laughs> we also hate that place. I, I don't think I've been to Toronto. You should check it out. Yeah. Uh, so, TV writing... Um, Samantha B. Full Frontal. How does it compare to the old college humor job? Um, is the pressure higher because it's for television, or does it feel sort of the same? I would say there's a little more of a. I'd say the pressure a little bit higher because yeah, because there is a very firm deadline. Like broadcast. The show, yeah, uh, the show airs on Monday, so it has to be written by Monday. Whereas like at College Humor, I mean, we we had a you know we were we had there were deadlines, but it was a little more flexible because usually the you know, a sketch would it'd be when we were going to release it was kind of to be determined, unless it was like a, a Christmas themed video. Then we had to get it out before Christmas, or it was like a topical video, like a like a sketch about I don't know Charlie bit my finger or something like that. <laughs> You're talking about Samantha B now. <laughs> yes, I've been I've been pitching a Charlie bit my finger sketch uh, piece. It's still topical because those kids are about to turn fifteen and thirteen. God, actually, Dan Gerwich and I we have this joke because I think he wrote. A, a sketch about the remember Corey Delaney, the kid who with the sunglasses, yeah, the who wouldn't sunglasses. take off his sunglasses. Oh, like, yeah. I'll apologize, but I'm not going to take off my sunglasses. <laughs> Dan wrote a sketch about that, maybe with someone else. Uh, <laughs> that was like a parody of that. Then, like, we didn't make it because like it was already not news anymore. And this is like seven years ago, but like right. once a year, once every couple of years, Dan and I will email Sam and be like, "Hey, man, we really think like you should give this another look. Like, yeah. we think it's like time. <laughs> it's like the current cultural climate really yeah. is, is primed for it. it. It's more topical now than ever. Yeah. Do you write when you're writing for Samantha B? Do you ever write like sketches like you did for College Humor? Or is it more like her monologue and uh, usually more the uh, at, like like yeah um, uh, segments segments like Act One, Act Two stuff, which is just a, a news story and kind of jokes off of that um we do 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 you do do where on her desk hey, okay you know honestly it's like a sophisticated news show and you oh, know sorry about that that's okay but we do do uh, <laughs> right. do you poo poo <laughs> actually i wanted to submit a packet for that show <laughs> in Your which on the uh, the afl cio <laughs> is there a labor crisis in this country <laughs> Uh, cold opens, which are like sketches, so oh. occasionally. And do you ever write for the internet? Kind of like how you used your like viral mind when you were writing for College Humor sketches. Do you, does that come in handy when you're writing for the TV show? Um, my intern sometimes. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think everything I've ever like you know everything you kind of use everything in your brain probably in in one way or another. But probably like the we do have a Twitter account, an Instagram account, and a Medium account, and we've kind of written all sorts of like done all sorts of silly random things on that so oh, interesting are you following the news uh more or did you always follow follow the news i think i always follow the news but i'm following a lot more now for sure you feel like you're way more up to date yeah i mean we're with this hiatus we are it's kind of bizarre to like because i to go from like checking it like hourly to sometimes going a day and not checking it it just is like what a what an exciting time to like start writing for the news because like between Trump and crooked Hillary, like you, I feel like mm-hmm. she's mm-hmm. giving you one enough. person yeah. trying to make America great, and the, and other, the other one, one trying to drag stealing, it into some sort of recession. I think she's, she's like stealing emails and shit. We're gonna have eight more years of Obama if we don't vote correctly. Is all <laughs> you're not literally. I, he's gonna he's gonna stay in office for eight years. You know, he founded ISIS. I do. You know, I read Trump's Twitter account. So, I, or did that what he claimed? Yeah, he's the yeah. founder and MVP. So yeah. not just not just the guy like not like just a figurehead that sort yeah. of checked out. <laughs> well, at least, also... so, at least something he did worked. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, one thing through Congress. <laughs> I can't believe Congress passed it. Have you heard about those clowns in Congress? <laughs> uh, but overall, super pro, great environment. Su- uh, enjoying the job over there. Oh yeah, it's great. I love. Yeah, they're the they're I, they're some of the smartest, nicest people I've ever met. How big is the writing staff? Uh, there are uh, six staff writers, a writer's assistant. And then 
Uh, our EP Joe is, is a writer, and Sam herself is a writer. So. Samantha Bee's uh, a writer on the show. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where's your office? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> you want a map? Yeah. It's in Manhattan. It's like uh, uptownish. Very cool. Yes. Yeah. I would. It's in uh, yeah. I would. It's in Kansas City. <laughs> I would get a job just fucking cleaning that office if it meant that I can get out of. Oh, this, we actually do need a janitor. This podcast shit. What man? <laughs> And I just, everybody has a fucking podcast. If I can tell my mom that I work for TV, that would be really cool. <laughs> well, you wouldn't work for TV. You'd be a janitor. You'd probably have to work for the building. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but, like, benefits, too? Do you get full benefits? Might you, like, <laughs> do I get health insurance and stuff like that? Not sure, necessarily yeah. the custodian, though. You have to <laughs> oh, do you get mind. them if you got a job? There's one there. question that you're asking, Pat, and then there's other questions about the job that you no, yeah. worked like to want, which was cleaning the building. <laughs> <laughs> Not even your floor. It'd be an honor just to be in the same building as where they shoot. Where do you shoot? Is it uh, 30 same Rock? right across the street, the studio across the street. Oh, got it. Cool. Uh, awesome. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty pretty sweet. And why do you think you deserve to win the Emmy over, let's say, the writing staff of The Daily Show or Colbert Report? Um, well, those, those two shows I don't think are nominated. Wow, them's fighting words. No, I Colbert don't. Report is not even nominated. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> scathing. <laughs> It's not instigating. It's starting a fight. All right. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll fucking be a part of it, but I'm not touching this shit with a 10 foot pole. I'll be a part of it, but I'm not touching it. <laughs> I want at Pat Castle's yes. quotation marks. I want all the buzz, Retweet. but none of the, none of the feed. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Do you want to answer some more questions here? Yeah. Uh, as long as they're junior related. A lot of them will or will not be junior related. Okay. I'm trying to find one from a lady. Oh, here we go. Okay. I got a lady. Do you have a lady's name? Oh, no. Uh, Merck. <laughs> Merck. <laughs> Angela Merkel. Angela Merkel. <laughs> Uh, hey guys, I just moved into college and I'm having a blast and a half. I live with three other girls and we get along so well. We're all majoring in hospitality, so everyone is so nice around here. However, this niceness has led to some interesting social situations. Thoughts? Oh, uh, let me keep reading. <laughs> 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 Two of my roomies are drop dead gorgeous. I'm not asking for a confidence boost. I know I'm, pr- I know myself pretty well, and I'm okay with who I am. But I'm just average looking, and I rarely get the male attention in public. I make friends easily, and I love to talk to people. So meeting people isn't the issue. I often go out with my roommates, and I find that they are constantly being showered with male attention. And I'm taking every time. I'm talking every time we go out, and they are asked for their numbers multiple times. I'm a little jealous, but only a little. I'm comfortable with my social standing, but I'm unaware of how to act. Ah. Oh, <laughs> are you reading about a couple of girls and you hit puberty, dude? <laughs> no. Your nuts finally dropped, Blumenfeld? Uh, uh, no, I have... The um, doo-doo thing I said is not a thing I have anymore, right? throat cancer. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry. It shouldn't affect the <laughs> how deep your voice is. Pussy. <laughs> I'm uh, really sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> you little 12 year old girl I didn't know little girls got throat cancer like that you little fucking pussy <laughs> do your parents know uh, um, that you're I'm, a fucking yeah. pussy <laughs> did it hurt when you fell from pussy <laughs> uh uh, I'm a little, uh, <laughs> I'm comfortable with my social standing, <laughs> but I'm unsure of how to act when they are always meeting guys when we go out. I feel as though I have very little to contribute to our conversations now, and it's embarrassing when we are approached by two guys, and they are clearly the targets. How can I best handle these situations when we go out? What can I say or do uh, to make it seem like I'm more on their level? I, don't, I would, don't want to find a mate, obviously, but it's getting annoying, and I absolutely love these girls. Thanks, love. Merc. Why is it obvious that she's not trying to find a mate? I don't know. Maybe she's trying to play it cool. Like, I don't need to hook up with any guys, but it's a little uncomfortable. Uh, well, there's like the uh, the standard, hey, everybody's attractive. There's no every, subjective. You can be hot to somebody, but not to somebody else. That being said, these girls sound like absolute dimes, and this oh chick is God, a six. Shows. This chick is a fucking five or a six. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, sweetheart, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> That's not her question. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is the last thing she asked. <laughs> uh, do you ever feel this way? Do you ever hang out with hot guys, and it's di- or is it different with guys and girls? Oh, no. For you I think two, I- you guys hang out together, so you need to answer this question carefully. I've been in situations where <clears throat> the guys I'm with are like 
like those Potter. hot guys in Austin or New Orleans was it were like the crew team from Dartmouth or Yale or something yeah yeah they're like six foot from, five yeah yeah uh, <laughs> well, that was we one didn't, night we didn't hang out with them for a long uh, yeah like I think I've been in situations like that but not necessarily to the point where I needed to like get used to it or like find some kind of protocol right like, Okay, when the girls come over, I'll just be on my phone or something. I feel like it's better to be with people more attractive than you, in a way, because I just like being around... Like, it's hard to break the ice, so, like, being around these types of magnets that uh, attracts people of any gender, uh, it's more beneficial to me, because I can stand back, join the conversation, not join the conversation. I can be the interesting guy that's not necessarily, like, super, super hot, but maybe I'm somebody's cup of tea. Maybe like this lady, she's not, uh, she calls herself, I don't know, she's pretty, uh, but not, I don't know what she calls her friends. Uh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, maybe there's, you know, a way to take advantage of her gorgeous friends because when guys come over, she can, you know, break the ice that way. Yeah, it sounds like it's, the real issue is just like, Groups of two guys approaching them and just talking to the two <clears throat> girls, right? Which I feel like, def- like when that happens, that just kind of sucks. So what do you what do you do? You just have to be polite, be happy, not make it noticeably get to you. Yeah, and then for the most part, you could maybe be a little more proactive with your friends. Like if there's a group of guys where like some are cute and like you know there's more than two right then you could be like hey let's go try to talk to those guys or something especially if you already like these girls i mean she likes these girls she likes hanging out with them yeah they're all hospitality majors yeah so they should know about how to be hospitable um yeah i think i what you guys are saying sounds right on i think i I feel like when i travel i have it's kind of like it's been a while since i've like gone out with a group of bros like looking for girls so i I feel like i'm kind of rusty at this but i get when i have i was probably that person this person which person the girl writing the email so like people would approach and you'd be sort of hanging back yeah i think i you just yeah you just kind of assume that you have something to offer that the other attractive people don't and sometimes you're right yeah sometimes you're wrong everybody's great at some things like everybody has this thing that puts them in like the 99th percentile of something just try to own who you are like kind of get develop your own style you know like be the best you you can be right and then yeah that way when you do goth what (laughs) just go really really goth go goth dark dark with or vamp what? That's oh, the new yeah. thing. Vamp goth. So, like, fangs, whether it be fake or you file. Fangs and a cape. Oh, that's really tight. It's called that could peacocking. Be a... yeah. <laughs> Backwards kangle hat. <laughs> the Samuel L. Jackson from 2003 look. Yeah. I do, uh... I don't know. It is a little bit of a sticky situation. But not the worst situation. Yeah, it sounds like it's just something that is going to suck sometimes and be, like, annoying. Uh, but I bet your fr- Like, who knows if her friends are, like super into getting hit on all the time and by groups of two. Right. Like, maybe just talk to them. Be like, hey, how do you feel when that happens? And if they're like, we like it, then you have to adjust to that. Or, or if they're like, no, we'd rather just hang out with you and not get hit on, then maybe you can help shield them from douchebags. Mm, the, the douche shield. But that's not, like, necessarily a job that this girl applied for should have to have as the non- hottest group or she'd, girl in the group she would have to apply and she'd have to get in and it's a it's a pretty competitive job mm. actually <laughs> i apply for it all the time yeah. just to get to hang around with hot <laughs> chicks <laughs> it's hard to be a douche shield when you're a guy uh, <laughs> when you're the dude <laughs> i'm i'm the douche shielding myself for myself so i don't know what to say uh go goth go goth or go home or uh you know take the good with the bad sometimes it's gonna suck sometimes it's gonna be good these the important thing is that you guys are friends and it doesn't it doesn't all this other stuff like when you guys go out with me like all the girls are hitting on me and you guys are so cool about that which i like which is you know nice that's true yeah i think you just got to angle toward bigger groups that's... oh so it's not two and one yeah, so it's like, like if it's the three of you guys, then you should be talking to groups of like four dudes. So yeah. one of the dudes feels uncomfortable and left out. Right, and go. everybody has their, their advantages and disadvantages within the group. Yeah. If so, you guys make a rule, it's like, hey, if, if only two guys come up, then like, fuck them, you know? Yeah, I, can, you make, can you do that? Can you, like, or, do you make rules with – I feel like that doesn't that, putting rules on it seems so sterile. I don't know what girls have to do because they get hit on all the time. Like, as a dude, I don't have any rule. 
right there's no, there's right no rule that's there. true because dudes rule <laughs> cats drool <laughs> uh okay can we answer one more question r- right quick before pat has to go yeah uh we need one last guy's name sorry girl's name uh Gurk. Yeah. <laughs> that was really good, dude. Thanks, man. <laughs> Gurk writes, every year for my birthday, I rent a cabin for me and some of my friends and my family to stay in for a long weekend. This year, my best friend added a chihuahua to her family of five cats and was afraid to leave it alone for the weekend. I assumed a dog is a dog and offered to uh, let her bring it along to ease her anxiety. She was pumped about it and even bought a life jacket for it so we could bring him tubing with us. Terrible idea. All the dog wanted to do was sleep on the couch, so she refused to leave the cabin the entire time since she didn't want to leave the dog alone. We all drank by the fire while she sat indoors, pouting that no one wanted to stay indoors with her. She had to bring it when we went shopping into town, so we were limited as to what bars we can go to and what places we could eat at. There was a small petting zoo-type place we all wanted to go to, and she sat outside and waited for two hours because she didn't want to stay in the cabin by herself. She made everyone miserable, including herself. Now we are home, and she is buying all these things like clothing and a stroller for it she recently told me that she can't come out of my house uh come to my house hardly at all anymore because she wouldn't be able to bring the dog so when we hang out it has to be in her place should i talk to her about being so obsessed with the dog am i overreacting she's super sensitive and obviously a bit crazy what would you do if you were me help this question is I exactly like the last question how so (laughs) because i wasn't paying attention to either (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> wow. I was going to say that regardless. <laughs> Do you actually see similarities, or are you saying they're completely uh, No, different? I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> Only uh, in the broadest possible sense, that they're both quandaries. <laughs> yeah, they're both dilemmas, moral or otherwise. <laughs> they're both things. Uh, it is funny and sad to... Well, one ah. is about a dog, the other was written by a dog. Thank you. Whoa, dude. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, 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 sorry. You just uh, got stronger as you said that. <laughs> You're buff for that. I'm a douche now. It is funny to have a sit-down conversation telling someone their dog is ruining their lives as they're holding a mini life vest for a chihuahua <laughs> and a tiny little stroller. Hmm? The dog's right there staring at you the whole time. <laughs> what? what did she mean like the chihuahua only wanted to lie on the couch? Like the chihuahua... I, that, I, like it just didn't want to go anywhere or do anything? I guess. Were they asking it? <laughs> oh, the dog was being a real diva because you know how chihuahuas can get. I, gosh, I almost want to, like, it's a two, it, it's not really a two-part question, but the cabin thing and the, re, it's like, it, the, the dog ruined the vacation and now it's, I guess, ruining her, yeah. the rest of her life at large. Yeah. I think you have to sit down and be like, hey, listen, I don't want to be friends with you if you're crazy obsessed with a chihuahua. Do they live together? The dog and the lady do, but not the lady and the friend. I don't know. Then, like, it's <clears> then, how, 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 I guess it's what she just said, how It's one thing it to be like, you're, we're not going to invite the dog on the next vacation because it was really shitty. Like, that's, the one thing is, like, the dog coming and ruining a group experience. The other is just, like, I won't this guy house. doesn't like the dog, so do you really break up with a friend because you don't like your friend's dog? It's a girl that doesn't like the dog, but yeah. But maybe, so? maybe you don't break up with a friend. Uh, sp- explicitly, you just be like, "All right, fine, then I just won't come over. I'll invite you to stuff, and then it's on you if you should want to come." Yeah. yeah, and then it's like, if you choose the dog over me, then you've chosen a dog over a human. I say, you, yeah, you don't have to have like a sit down conversation and be and be like, "You're obsessed with the dog; it's ruining <laughs> our friendship." But I think if you continue just being yourself, invite your friend to fun activities and like just watch her cancel, 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 <laughs> not be able to go because of the dog. You can finally start chipping away and be like, geez, this like, you yeah, can, you can make small asides. <laughs> so the dog who's currently in a life vest and a stroller, which doesn't really make sense. You can't Extra go and safe. You can't come inside of this trampoline sky zone because the dog won't feel comfortable yeah. with there. Are you sure you want to? Are you sure you want to have a dog? It yeah. feels like it's really limiting. But I guess maybe frame it like that. Like this dog. Make sure it's actually ruining your friend's experience, and make sure that she's actually upset. Because otherwise, it's just you being upset. Yeah, I like the idea of the dog being like this this sassy uh, new friend that's doing it on purpose. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't possibly go kayaking today. 
<laughs> I'm feeling under the weather. Are you really going to leave me and hang out with your other friends? <laughs> What Where accent the, is that? <laughs> he's sort of Italian. Are you yeah, really yeah. going to hang out with your other friends? <laughs> oh. Yo quiero spend time with you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an Italian Taco Bell dog. That's right. It's an Italian Taco Bell the Olive dog. Gar- the Taco Bell dog jumped Taco Bell and went to the Olive Garden. <laughs> Verizon like guy style. Guy, yeah. <laughs> Which brings us back to the Sprint folks. I mean, this guy's a modern day Benedict Arnold. I think also it's you, you should, she, yeah, I think not giving her like an ultimatum right away is like being a little, a bit sensitive because people really love their dogs. I happen to not have a dog, but you know, like if the dog is bringing her, giving purpose to her life or giving her joy, I don't, you don't want to, you don't want to like force her to stop doing that either. Right. But so I think, yeah, just like it's on her sort of. Be extra aware if your friend is actually miserable. If you're not dating the person or married to the person or like living with the person, I, yeah, I don't think you can like kind of be too upset about it. But if it was very clear that a dog was making my friend miserable, I think I might say something not like you should get rid of the dog. I think I would say like, you know, if you ever wanted to give the dog up, none of us would judge you. <laughs> if you were to lose the dog, we would all be better can, than okay. Maybe don't that. bring the life vest next time. <laughs> make, do you we'll, remember, we'll try that kayaking thing. We talked thing. about this on the podcast before, but our uh, our movie idea of a of a pet assassin. Oh, yeah. All dogs go to Kevin. Uh-huh. So <laughs> it's a guy named Kevin who kills dogs and makes it look like an accident whenever it's convenient for the friends of this that This is the life. job for Kevin. Yeah. Or like a boyfriend or a girlfriend who hates their partner's pet right exactly yeah. a pet murderer it's like ace ventura but the dark version of that it's ace ventura's nemesis <laughs> the cable guy meets ace ventura. that was our first movie that we legit pitched our agents by the way too and they loved it <laughs> they was it called it all dogs room. go to kevin yes uh. <laughs> it's starring kevin hart and kevin arnold <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The fictional character from Wonder Years and Kevin Hart, the biggest <laughs> comedian in America, team up to kill animals together. Thoughts? Um, Kevin James is also in it. <laughs> He's attached, but it's just executive produced. I'm going to soft pass. <laughs> okay. Can I soft pass? You can. <laughs> <laughs> Most places have. Yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. Thanks uh, Thanks to you guys for writing, and thanks to Pat for coming on the show again. Thanks for having me. Uh, if you have your own questions or your own theme song submissions, the email for everything is if I were you show at gmail.com. Opening theme song, again, was written by Mitchell, the Pixies cover. We all loved it. This closing one was written by Claire, whose Instagram is C-L-U-R-R-F-L-E-U-R. You think she'll get any Instagram followers? I sure don't. Uh, let's prove but I'm gonna Jake follow her. right. <laughs> uh, so thanks, Claire. Thanks, Mitchell. Thanks, Pat. Thanks to you guys for listening. Pat, do you have anything that you want to promote before? Sorry, we, we are out of time, but we will talk to you <laughs> next I'm week. Charity at auction. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Uh, no, uh, Full Frontal, Mondays at 10.30 on TBS. Only. New episode September 12th. On TBS. Uh, we'll try. Oh, maybe this will come out September 12th, so you can watch it tonight. Ooh, yeah. Please. How's, how's that for st- Stop listening to this podcast right now. <laughs> well, it might be the morning. Because it's over. Still. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. We'll be back next week. Later, guys. If I were you, now keep in mind this might be true, I Think I'd be a little less of a dick. Yeah, that's the trick. So email us. We'll field your questions as we please. And don't forget every day to seize the cheese. That was a headgum podcast.